Mr. Deputy President, looking at the cost of basic commodities such as unga and such commodities, would you say that in the six months that you have been in power, you've done enough, the most that could, you could have done as a government? Uh, I think we have done extremely well. When we came in, the cost of unga was between 230 to 250. And at that time, mm -hmm there was a subsidy. Despite the subsidy, which was, you know, which cost the government eight billion, and which of course was stolen. The UNGA was 250, between 230 to 250. We have worked very hard. And now UNGA, depending on where you are buying, is between 170 to 191. As of this afternoon, at um, Naiva supermarket, it was 178 uh, per two, kilo, 2 kg. And I think coming down to 50 shillings, 45 shillings, without patting ourselves on the back, I think we have done extremely well. And that has been short term. The long term, we decided as a government and uh, under the wise leadership of President William Ruto on advice of serious economists that subsidizing consumption is foolish because it's not sustainable. You cannot subsidize consumption. And the president was well advised and after analyzing all the advice from all sorts of experts and economists and putting his own thinking into it, decided that the way to go is to subsidize production. And that is why Immediately after coming into office, we set money aside to subsidize the cost of fertilizer. Fertilizer that was going a 50 kg bag at 7,000 is now 3,500. The net effect of that is that the farmers will get a better yield at a lower cost of production. And that benefit will be passed to the consumer. So looking at the way things are going, all factors being constant, God being merciful mm -hmm. and giving us good rain. We have prepared the farmers well. Mm -hmm. In the bread basket, 16 counties, our bread basket, we have sufficient fertilizer. I went to Mombasa personally to oversee the distribution of that fertilizer. I was in Kericho to ensure that it has reached. I saw with my own two eyes, all farmers have fertilizer and are ready for the long range planting. All factors being constant, with God's mercy, we are going to have a bumper harvest with high yield mm. and at a lower cost of production. That should be able to set the cost of Unga down 150, 140, all the way to 120. And we believe that if eventually we can stabilize the cost of Unga at 120, 110, 115, we think that is fairly comfortable for the people of Kenya. So I think we have done well. So when I see these Mandamano characters making noise at us, the question I'm asking is one. They are telling us that they are going for Mandamano for us to bring down the cost of Unga. When Unga was at 230, they never called for Mandamano. They were right inside the government. The president Uru Kenyatta said his advisor is Raila Odinga. He's on record. Raida Odinga never called Mandamano when Unga was at 230. Why is he calling for Mandamano when Unga is at 178? It's double speak. Number two, he had an opportunity then as the advisor of President Uru Kenyatta without having to go to Mandamano. He was part of government. He would have advised his hardship brother on how to bring the cost of Unga down. Just how foolish do these people think Kenyans are? These are the same Kenyans who are buying unga between 230 and 250 during the reign of the Hardship Brothers. There is a new government that has brought unga down by 50 shillings, 45, all the way up to 178, 175. I think without blowing our own trumpet, mm -hmm. I think we are not doing very badly. We are not doing <coughs> as much as we would have wanted. But telling us to subsidize unga, we are not going to do that because it's not sustainable. It is foolish. In any case, there is no mechanism that is proven to subsidize UNGA. Mm -hmm. We have sat down with millers, and I said I will speak. 
Four billion shillings were released from the national treasury to subsidize UNGA. We went throughout this country, and I want to challenge the people of Kenya. No Kenyan anywhere saw a packet of UNGA at 100 shillings. Those millers are demanding money from us. Mm -hmm. They only received 1.7 billion. 2.3 billion shillings was stolen. They are saying they did not receive the money, and the money left the national treasury. We are saying, why these people are calling for Madamano to return the UNGA subsidy is because the network of stealing that money for UNGA subsidy belongs to them. So they want us to release another two billion, okay. which the National Assembly has refused. Deputy President, you had um, a strategy to reduce the cost of specifically maize. Yes. In January, President William Ruto is on record in Eldoret saying your government has a strategy to import cheap maize, free duty maize, by end of February. And um, even the CS for Agriculture, Medical and Turi, including Moses Korea of Trade, they're on record saying it. But now, after the end of, we are now in March, there's no importation of cheap maize. Kenyans were waiting for this. Yes. Where is the maize? It's good you have asked that question. The maize is not available anywhere in the world. The CS for Agriculture and the PS, the Honorable Mythical Inturi, were in Zambia, which produces maize, and there's no maize available. The only maize that is available in South Africa, and we are in competition with Angola and Rwanda for the same maize. The maize in Brazil, bringing it here because of the distance, the cost is too high. We decided as a government that the government is not going to import any maize directly because we don't want corruption. And we, the government doesn't want to get involved in importation directly because we don't want scandals. We don't want people in government to get into business. We advertise for millers and other people to apply to be given permit to import duty-free maize so that we can bring down the cost of maize flour. Unfortunately, and I'm sorry to tell the people of Kenya, there's no maize almost everywhere in the world. Are you now saying I'm that Kenyans should listen, wait? Listen, listen, I'm just saying. It is a difficult situation. It is uh, two months ago, almost three, when we gave people to import maize. Mm -hmm. And most of those people we gave maize, they are, in, they are telling us wherever they have gone, they are competing with governments for the same maize. There is a problem of maize availability everywhere in the world. And, we are, and that is why the president sent Bithika uh, Linturi to discuss on a government-to-government -government program between the government of Zambia and the <coughs> government of Kenya. And they have said the earliest they can give us maize is September. So what we are saying is that we are asking, last week the cabinet approved the importation of another 500,000 metric tons of maize, this time not to freelance importers, but to the millers themselves. And we have sat down with the millers. And they have said that uh, they have established good contacts. And they can pull resources together because of economies of scale. They can be able to compete with governments. Because what is happening is that other governments across the world are competing for the same maize. I don't want to portray a very dark mm. future. But I want to say that it is not easy. And I speak honestly because sometimes I think Kenyans deserve the truth. Okay. Because when you prepare them for the truth, it's normally a good thing. Right. Everything is being done. And I was in Eldoret. There are two ships in the high seas with maize. And I told the people of Eldoret and Kitale, the farmers there have been holding maize and spitting higher prices. And the prices are already very good at 6,000 per, uh, per 90 kg bag. And I did tell the farmers, when these two ships arrive in the country and the maize is offloaded into the market, the prices will come down. Please, release your maize. If the farmers in our bread basket counties, the 16 of them agree to release the maize that they have, if they can be patriotic Kenyans, to understand that people of Kenya need food, and the maize they are holding is making the prices go up. If they can agree as early as tomorrow to release the maize that they are holding into the market, the prices of Unga will come down 
even to 140. So I want to use this platform mm -hmm. to make an appeal to all maize farmers across the country to be patriotic, to think of their brothers and sisters who are suffering, to consider at the current prices which are very good by any standard for the farmer and bad for the consumer. For the benefit of the consumer and the Kenyan people to consider to release into the market all the stocks of maize that they are holding. Okay, Mr. Deputy President, thank you. And again, we have also agreed. Okay. Mm -hmm. The animal feeds millers are competing with human beings for maize for the animals. So what we have done again, the cabinet has approved the importation of yellow maize for livestock, uh, for, 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 for animal feed millers, so that they stop competing for the white maize. And that will lessen the strain on us. So we are saying the yellow maize that has been approved by government to be imported duty free for our for animal feeds. I want to ask the miller, I met them personally, to take advantage of that widow, import as much as they can, and produce uh, feeds for the animals. Again, yellow maize, for those who wish, the government does not want to recommend it to anybody to eat yellow maize. But yellow maize is good. Okay. If you go to the supermarket, there is yellow maize, and the price is higher than white maize. It's very nutritious. But for those Kenyans who may want to consider okay, sir. to consume yellow maize, we are importing both for human beings and for animals. When you okay, say that there's no maize anywhere, and I remember the president in his Jamhuri speech, he said maize that was expected in January, an assortment of foodstuffs, that was the wording he used. Then the two CSS came and informed the, the nation that... Uh, maize will come and you've said you are speaking the truth you've gone around the world there's no maize anywhere did the government mislead Kenya? maize is available mm -hmm. but the prices are higher than what we have here okay the maize that is cheaper that we can bring in is what is having a problem you can bring maize as far from brazil from america it's fine but because of the cost of transportation when you add the price of maize in america in brazil in argentina when you add the cost of transportation, you find that the price will be higher than what we have here, which then defeats the purpose of the importation. So the idea is that we get the millers to join, as they have agreed. There is a lot of maize in South Africa. They pull so that they are able to buy in bulk, because what is happening in South Africa, they want to sell in bulk. Okay. And the people we have given that importation are not able to buy in bulk. So there is a strategy by giving 500,000 metric tons to the millers to import from South Africa or elsewhere, and that will be able to deal with the problem. Okay, Your Excellency, let me take you back to the issue of fertilizers. And you've mentioned that you were in Mombasa and you're satisfied um, by the way fertilizer is being distributed. Um, just a quick research shows we have about 14,000 uh, registered farmers in the uh, fertilizer subsidy program, only 4,600 currently have received um, fertilizer. And then um, there's also the issue of decentralization. A lot of farmers or their representatives that we uh, talk to say that there's the issue of decentralization. Most of them have to travel all the way to Kitale. Yes. Um, and then the fertilizer that they have is the NPK type, um, but they prefer the DAP to the NPK type. Uh, I just want you to address the issue of decentralization and the issue of farmers saying that they have not been involved uh, when it comes to making such crucial uh, decisions. No, uh, we are a responsible government that has done research and done tests on the soil and determined the kind of fertilizer that is required, and that is NPK. DAP causes us a, has a problem with acidity, and most of the soils in the breadbasket areas uh, are very acidic, and therefore when you put DAP, it does not help the farmer. Mm -hmm. But the farmers have a tradition, and sometimes when you have used DAP all your life, you simply want to continue using DAP. But this government is a responsible government. It has done uh, soil testing and determined that uh, DAP is not the correct uh, type of fertilizer. Okay. But those who wish to buy DAP is available at the normal price in the shops. Okay. But for the subsidized one, uh, it is the one that is recommended by government. Mm. Your statistics are not true. We have enough fertilizer everywhere. In fact, what we have done we have had now added the counties of Kisi and Nyamira. Initially, we had uh, Kiricho, Bomet, 
e, Usiangishu, Tanzania, Bungoma, e, Kakamega, Nakuru, Narok. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have now added uh, Kisi and Nyamira and uh, a bit of Baringo in terms of the areas of Eldamara Bain. What we have agreed with the county governments, they are partnering with the national government okay. so that they offer the last mile distribution. What we have requested the governors to do, where we have national cities and produce board depot, mm -hmm. the governors, because agriculture is a developed function, can open many depots and sub depots in every constituency. Mm -hmm. And when I was in um, Usi and Gishu, that matter came, and we discussed with our governor there, uh, Kotimoja, and we agreed. And I think that is going on. So I want also to take this opportunity to speak to all our county governors, wherever they are, uh, and plead with them to fast track and hasten the opening up of uh, sub depots and mini depots okay. to take the fertilizer near the people so that we save them the cost of okay. transportation okay. and the bother of leaving their farms to go and queue for fertilizer. Thank you. Um, but as, as we speak, I want to confirm that we have sufficient stocks of fertilizer across uh, those counties. And progressively, this is a pilot. It's going to be replicated across the country for other crops, not just maize. Okay, but, but uh, Excellency, Mr. President, before we transition, you said sufficient fertilizer, but the NCPB in Kitale, Transoia County, they say they need 400,000 bucks of fertilizer. They only received uh, 80,000. A deficit I think of 320,000. The, the process is ongoing. Uh, they don't even have the facility to stock 400,000. What we have encar encouraged them to do is dispense as it arrives. And the process is continuous. Every day, uh, and you know the fertilizer we have uh, bought, we have also encouraged you know, the, 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 the bagging and the packing to be done in Mombasa right. so that we can also create employment. Right. So what is happening is that it's a continuous process. The bagging and the, the labeling is going on in Mombasa. We are using SGR, we are using trucks and we are dispensing the fertilizer as it comes. But we have sufficient fertilizer for the long range for those counties that deal with the production of our grains. The All process right. is ongoing, yes. This promise of fertilizer started on day one in Kasaran. It's now six months. No, but it's fertilizer. It's not a promise. It's but going on. April is here now. No, 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 no. There is, like I, there is, there is the, the issue of fertilizer is not a promise. It's happening. And uh, I was in Kitale. I distributed uh, fertilizer. I was in Mombasa. There were your people who are there. The stores are full. The trains are full. In fact, the problem we are having is transportation. The SGR cannot cope with the speed of what it done. But the issue of the availability of fertilizer okay. is not an issue. Okay. There is sufficient fertilizer in the country. Okay, Excellency, we are into the last 15 minutes and we now transition to education and Nancy Okwari will take us through. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we can start by talking about the transition to junior secondary school. And it has been marred by parents complaining about congestion in classes, lack of textbooks, and recently when he appeared before the Senate Committee on Education, the Cabinet Secretary said that 55,000 learners, over 55,000 learners are yet to report to junior secondary school. Would you say that as a country we are well on course? Well... The CBC is a difficult matter because it was rushed without proper public participation. I remember the former CS for Education, CS Amina Abdallah, had said that we wait for a while. And the then president could hear none of it and he ordered for it to be rolled out. And as a result, it was rushed. It is a, it's a paradigm shift in our education system in terms of the curriculum in terms of teachers, in terms of physical facilities. The country was not ready. It was rushed. So when we were campaigning, we had a session with all stakeholders in matters education. And they took us through the challenges of CBC. And on assuming office, the first month, President William Ruto established the presidential working party on educational reforms. That party, led by Professor Rafael Munavu, has traveled the breadth and width, traveled the breadth and width of this country and talked to stakeholders, pupils, teachers, parents, educationists, private uh, owners of schools, and they are in the last stage of compiling a report. But they did submit uh, 
an interim report to the president because we needed to make certain decisions. Because you know there was an exam for the pupils in 76 and they needed to know what is their future. And the report that came to the president and the president concurred, the recommendation by the people of Kenya through the Presidential Working Party on Education and Reforms was that junior secondary school be domiciled in primary schools. And that decision has been made. Already, there is a crisis. The crisis would have been tenfold had we proceeded on the initial plan of those young boys and girls going to secondary school. Already, the parents are having a challenge even affording the school uniform for the junior secondary school. And the president has directed the Minister for Education to make sure that no child is barred from going to class on an account of not having a uniform for the junior secondary school. So I want to say that there are good elements in CBC, mm -hmm. but there is quite a number of issues that require serious reform. So we have agreed as a government, we are not doing away with CBC, but there is going to be tremendous reform. And uh, the situation we are in, it is because the previous administration did not have respect for public participation. They dictated a system without mm. talking to the stakeholders. They needed to talk to the teachers. They needed to talk to the parents. They needed to talk to the educationists. And now what has happened is that they have been spoken to and they have given their views on how to make this system work. We are waiting for the final report, okay. which will be ready before the end of this month, on the various recommendations on how to reform CBC and other reforms in the educational sector, including training, mm -hmm. including universities. You know we have a big challenge in our universities where they are not able to sustain their activities because of lack of funds from the National Treasury. There are various reforms that will be initiated on how we handle our universities. There will be reforms on the TVET sector. Right. So the whole thing, the, the, the presidential working party on educational reforms will come up with a holistic recommendation on how to re-engineer the whole educational sector All right. for the purpose of our children and for prosperity, for, for, for ahead, for the years ahead. Okay, and Excellency Deputy President, when we talk about CBC, there is the, the pivotal question of teachers, and uh, we are talking about 116,000 deficit at the moment in the country. Yes. There is the position of the chief administrative position, uh, secretaries in the country. Let's go hypothetical by the number that the former president appointed, 29. You will require two billion to maintain all the CISs who will be appointed, though this uh, is not envisioned in the constitution. Why then not refocus this priority? Because this money can employ 5,714 teachers and also employ the 4,000 unemployed doctors in the country. I mean, talking about in, in the midst of austerity, why do you need the CAS position, for example? Well, to start with, uh, in matters teachers, there is a very big gap the way you have said. In six months, the Ruto administration has done something that has never been done in the history of this country. We have employed 35,000 teachers so that we can start bridging the gap. Next year, we'll do another 35,000. We had initially wanted to do it in two years, 116,000. It was in our plan. But on reaching here where we are, and looking at the economy and the performance of the economy, we found that we cannot fill the gap in two years. It needs to be spread across five years. But we have started somewhere. We have now uh, rolled out the employment of 35,000 teachers, and that will really be a big relief to our schools. On the issue of saying that uh, if we don't appoint the CSs, uh, then it can go to the teachers. The same argument, would, why don't you do away with the deputy president so that we can employ the teachers? I don't think that argument will hold. The president, in his wisdom and governance structure, from time to time will determine the levels of support that he requires to govern. 
we have come from, we have found a country that is in a hole. Mm. We are trying to get out of that hole. We have found, like now, the Minister of Agriculture. It's always out of the country. For a good reason. Looking for maize. He was in Morocco looking for fertilizer. He was in uh, Zambia looking for this. He was in that. He's hardly in the country. And he's not out there having leisure. Mm. He's working. He needs to leave somebody here to handle other matters that are supposed to be handled by the minister. Because the PS, the PS is there. Okay. He is the accounting officer of the ministry. But at the policy level, there is a gap. I was looking for CS Linturi last week. I was going to the uh, agricultural show in uh, Eldoret. And he was not here. He was in some country where the president had sent him. If there was a CAS, that is a person I would have gone to with to the Eldoret show so that he can make whatever policy pronouncements that he needs to make as a minister there. But I had to recall in Turi from wherever he was, he stopped what he was doing to come back so that we go for the show. Because what happens when you go to meet farmers, when you go to meet exhibitors, there are certain issues that will be raised that needs the minister to be there to make an answer. So from where I sit, listening to the president, assisting him in the management of the affairs of this country, chairing the cabinet committees, there's a gap. There's a serious gap. And we need another level of helpers to enable us execute our mandate. And the president and I and the rest of us are persuaded okay. that the cost, the benefit of having the CSs will outweigh the cost to it. Okay. So that we have another level. And you see even previously, during those years, there was a minister, there was an assistant minister. When the minister is not there, the assistant minister will go to parliament and answer questions. We are reaching a place where we are getting stuck because, you know, as a country, we have agreed that the model of development is PPP, uh, public-private pri partnership. We have a lot of work to do to engage with investors across the world. This means that the cabinet secretaries at their level need to travel to enter into agreements with various countries, with various investors. And what happens when they are not there? There is a gap. So in the next few days, okay. uh, the president will uh, name uh, uh, the CSs. And by the way, it's a recommendation by the Public Service Commission. And those people will go to parliament, they'll be vetted. Then they'll come and add value to the government by assisting the cabinet secretaries and by you know, filling that gap where we are getting caught up in situations that are not very neat okay. in terms of service delivery. Thank you. Uh, we have under 10 yeah. minutes to go, and uh, we have uh, a serious issue insofar as uh, our security is concerned. We have woken up to a serious declaration by the CS, and then the announcement that in seven months, 135 Kenyans have died, including... 20 security officers. In one week alone, Samburu West, areas of uh, Malaso, Pura, and Kurkur, a dozen killed, six people killed in Tot Marakwet. At the time, we have a multi agency operation on the ground. Are we, is this war winnable or it's just another, for lack of a better word, waste of time and resources? How do you reconcile the fact that we have a very serious operation ongoing? and people are dying. And starting tomorrow morning, there are areas that uh, civilians have been ordered to vacate, meaning that it is another humanitarian crisis. What are the measures to <coughs> handle this crisis? And uh, yes, did the government think through this humanitarian crisis that will emanate from tomorrow, 8.30? Thank you very much. I, Rigadi Gashagwa, come from a security background. I have, for 15 years, been involved in matter security. I am trained. Uh, I'm a paramilitary officer. I'm trained in weapon handling, in basic combat skills. I understand this topic. President William Ruto has made a decision 
and I support him 100% that this cattle rustling and brutal menace and the nonsense around it must come to an end. It's a difficult decision. It has to be done. There is a lot of impunity in the North Rift and other areas that are prone to security challenges. What has happened is that previously, any time an operation is ordered, previous leaders have taken political considerations and stopped the operations. When leaders make noise because of the elections, they stop the operations. So the raiders, the bandits, have been embodied by impunity because they know an operation will be ordered, noise will be made, and it will be stopped. In fact, sometimes they have been sneaking to a neighboring country for a few months, and then they come back. I want to tell the people of Kenya, this operation will go on for one month, six months, one year, two years, three years, five years, whatever it takes until sanity is restored in the North Rift. What has happened is that when we ordered this operation and the president asked the military to come in to support the IG, and I really want to thank and commend Professor Kifura Kendiki for his leadership in this matter. He's a cool guy. Many people had demeaned him because of his size and height. And he doesn't shout too much and doesn't have too much bravado. But he has planned well. I have listened to him. We have listened to the commanders. They have got a good plan. What has happened is that these bandits in Suguta Valley and other gorges are using women and children as a human shield so that they can stop the security officers from carrying out their work. An order has been given. All those areas where the bandits are for people to live, the women and the children, and they have been given a deadline. Those who don't live, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They have, they have to live. These bandits cannot hold the government at ransom anymore. Thank you. We are tired. This matter must be sorted out once and for all. And we are not going to allow criminals and bandits to use women and children as human shield. An ultimatum has been given. We are going to send people with planes and megaphones and ask the women and the children to leave and leave us to face with the bandits. We are willing to have an engagement with them one to one. Thank you. If the bandits want to leave too, they can leave. Okay. But we are asking the bandits to ask their women and children to leave those areas. Thank you. And then we can have one to one engagement. But this government okay. is a government that will sort out that nonsense Sometimes. once and for all.